Welcome to part three and the last part of this tutorial series where we're creating this hot dog factory satisfying looping animation. So if you haven't seen the other parts, I'll leave the links in the description to that. And I'll also leave the playlist if you'd like to watch the entire tutorial series. Now, as I said before, if you'd like to help support me and my YouTube channel, then you can purchase the finished tutorial files on my Gumroad store, and you can also get them if you join my Patreon. And checking out my Gumroad store and Patreon page are also really great ways to help support me and my YouTube channel. So this is the last part and in this part we're going to be doing all the materials and the lighting and then we're going to render this out and then in Blender's video editor we're going to video edit the loop together and we're also going to add those sound effects to make the final animation look really nice. Now we're not doing animation right now so make sure that the auto key is turned off. That is important because if you for some reason move something and the auto key is on then it'll add a keyframe there and you don't want to add keyframes right now because we're not doing the animation. So I'm going to click on this button right here to show the overlays. In the previous part, we just turned off the overlays to kind of see how the animation would look looping around. Now, as I said in part one of this tutorial series, I'm going to be using the Cycles Render Engine, but you could totally use Eevee if you want to. Everything will work fine in Eevee, but Cycles is a bit more realistic, so I'm going to be using Cycles. All right, so I'm going to press Z, move my mouse up, and go into rendered mode just so that we can preview how this is looking. Now, if you go right here to the render properties, I'm going to go down here and open up the color management, and I'm going to make sure the view transform is set to filmic just so that the lighting is a bit more realistic. The filmic view transform will just make the lighting look a bit better. And then also to make the colors a bit more contrasty and make the image look a bit nicer, on the look here I'm going to change this to medium high contrast. And that'll pop out the colors and make it a bit more contrasty and just make it look a little bit nicer. Now as you can see we did already do some of the materials. So we already created the material for the hot dog bun and then we also added in the HDRI lighting in the previous parts of this tutorial. Tutorial. But I do want to add in a nice big light just to brighten everything up a little bit more. So I'm going to press Shift A and let's go right down here to light and I'm going to add an area light. I can press G to grab and R to rotate and we'll press R to rotate and S to scale that up. We're just going to make this a nice big light kind of shining at our factory. And I'll rotate this over a bit more and just stick it something like that. And then if we go right over here to the object data properties, I can turn up this power to make it more bright. So I'm going to turn the power up to like 200. So that it's a bit more bright um, and then let's go into the camera view and just see how that is looking and then if you wanted to you could just make it slightly blue so it's a, just a slightly blue light and now we just have a bit more light in our scene and it looks a bit more bright. All right, so now let's add the conveyor belt material. So I'm going to click on this material right here, and then I'm going to click right over here on the material properties. Let's click on new, and I can just call this belt. Now for this material, I'm going to take the base color, and I'm going to make it more gray. So let's just make it a bit more gray. And then I can also click right here, and I can drag and drop this material on this other conveyor belt as well. Let's just make this a bit darker. And then also, I do want to make it metal. So let's take this metallic value and turn that all the way up to one so that it is a metal material. And then also, I do want to turn the roughness down just a little bit. So I'll just turn the roughness down a little bit to like a 0.47. So it's a little bit more reflective. And then if you want to use the exact same color that I'm using, I'm going to be using a hex value of 5C. 5C, 5C. So that is the exact gray color that I'll be using for the base color right here. If you click over on the hex value, I'll be using that for the color. And then let's also click on this right here, um, this back shelf right here, and we want to add the same exact material. So I'm going to click on the drop down right here, and I'm going to add the belt material for the conveyor belt. So let's click right over here on the backdrop, and we're going to make the material for the background. So I'm going to click on new, and I can just call this wall or background or whatever you want to call this. So I'm now going to go over here to the shading tab, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of a procedural setup. So I'm just going to be using a few procedural nodes. So I'm first going to turn the base color down so that it is more gray. And then I do want this to be metal, so I'm going to turn the metallic value all the way up just to make it look a bit more like a factory with metal walls. And if you want to use the same exact base color that I'm using, you can click over on the hex value. And on the hex value, you can type in 5B, 5B, 5B. So that is the exact color that I'll be using. All right, now I want to add just a little bit of a texture on the background. So I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to search for a noise texture. Let's drop the noise texture down here. And then earlier in the tutorial series, 
issues, we did turn on the Node Wrangler add-on. So with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, I'm going to press Control T, and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. Make sure the noise texture is selected when you press Control T. Now I don't need the mapping, so I'm going to click on it and I'll press X to delete it. And then let's take the object, and we're going to put the object up to the vector so it's using the object coordinates. And then using another feature from the Node Wrangler, I can hold down the Control and Shift key and click on nodes to select them, and then that is going to preview the node. Now let's turn the scale up to 7 so that it is a bit smaller, and then I'm also going to turn the detail all the way up to 15 so it has more detail. And then what I want to do is I want to put the factor into the roughness so that is going to affect the roughness. And then I can control, shift, and select the principle to preview that. Now that is a little bit strong, it's a little bit contrasty, so I want to make it more subtle. So I'm going to press shift A, and I'm going to search for a color ramp. Let's click on the color ramp and I can just drop it in here between the noise texture and the roughness. So I can now just change these colors and that is going to change how rough it's gonna be so we can control the roughness. So this first white tab, I'm gonna make it a bit darker to make it a bit shiny. And that way everything is gonna be a bit more reflective. But then I'm gonna click on the black tab and I'm gonna turn the black tab up and you can see that as I turn it up, it becomes a bit more rough. So now if you look at this on side view, you can see there's just a little bit of roughness there and it kind of changes and it looks a bit more realistic. All right, so now we are going to be adding the metal on the arms. So I'm gonna be having a light metal and a dark metal. So to preview this better, I'm gonna just press the Z key, hold down the Z key and go into the material preview so that we can preview that material in real time. So I'm just going to select this first object right here. Let's click on new and I can just call this metal light. So we're going to have two different types of metal, a lighter metal and a darker metal. And then I'm also going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to shift and select all of the other arm objects. So just hold down the shift key. Let's move over here and just hold down the shift key. We're just going to select all of the objects for the arms. And also right here, we're going to hold down the shift key and select all the claws. So now what I'm gonna do is lastly, shift and select this one here. And this one has the light metal material on this object. So now that this one is the last one that's selected, I can press control L and control L is going to link data. And I'm going to link the materials. And that way, all of these objects are going to have that same material. And then I'm going to tab into edit mode and I want this circular object object to have the dark metal. First, let's make the light metal though. So I'm just going to take the base color and I'm going to make that a bit more of a gray color. And the hex value that I'll be using for this one is going to be 8E. 8E, 8E, so just like that, kind of a light gray. And then let's also turn the metallic up so that it looks nice and shiny like a metal material. And then I also wanna use that same noise texture that we used on the background on the metal. So I'm gonna click on the background and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and select all three of these nodes. I'm now gonna press control C and that will copy the nodes. And then I'm gonna click over on the light metal and then I'll press control V. And for some reason it didn't do it, let me try that again. So just hold down shift key and select all these nodes and then press control C to copy it click on this and then press control V and that is going to paste the nodes so I can now take the color and put that into the roughness and now if you look closely you can see that we have that nice change in texture right there and then also I'm gonna turn the scale down so let's just turn the scale down maybe to like a three um, and that is looking pretty nice. So we can go into rendered mode. Let's just see how that is looking in the rendered view. And then if you wanna make that a bit more contrasty, you can change the colors on the color ramp. So I'm gonna click on this darker gray tab and I'm gonna make this a little bit darker just so that everything's a little bit more shiny and you can see that change a bit nicer. So that's pretty good. Let's also click on this white tab and we could make this a little bit brighter. So that is gonna be it for our light metal material. So I now wanna duplicate this and then just make it a darker metal. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode on this object and then I'm going to press A to make sure everything is deselected. I'm now just gonna hover my mouse over this object and press L and that is going to select the linked vertices. And then I wanna click right back over here on the material properties. So right here on the light metal, I'm gonna click on this plus right here to make a new material within the material slots of this object. And then I'm gonna click on the drop down, and I'm going to add the metal light. Now I wanna duplicate this so it's a separate material but it still has the same information. So to do that, I'm gonna click on this button right here and that is going to duplicate this so it now is called metal light. Is 001. So now I can just change this to metal dark. So it is now called metal dark. So now I want to click on the assign button. So click on assign, and that is going to assign the dark metal to that part of the object. 
And then we just need to change this, so we need to make it darker. So click on the base color and we can make it darker. You can see how that is looking. And if you want to use the same exact color that I'm using, I'm going to be using a hex value of 505050. So that is the dark color that I'll be using. So now I want to do that for all of the other objects. So I want all these other objects to have a darker part and a lighter part. And the darker part is going to be where the hinges are. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to just shift select all these objects. So just hold down the shift key select all these objects and hold down the shift key and just select all these objects here and also all of these objects right here and this object right here and then lastly you can shift and select this object so I'm now going to press Control L and then again I want to link the materials so that they have the same materials so I'm gonna link the materials now you can see it didn't really change anything but if you click on these now you can see that in the material slots of all these objects they now have the dark metal and the light metal so now what we just need to do is assign the light metal and the dark metal to the correct spots. So let's go back to the layout just so this is a bit easier to do. So what we need to do is we need to select all these objects, the arm objects, and then we also need to select the claw objects. And then let's go over here. So hold down the shift key and select this object and this object. And then we need to select this one and also these two claws and also hold down the shift key and select these two claws. So they all have the dark metal. So I can now just tab into edit mode and that's going to go into the multi object editing. So I'm now just going to select all of the pieces that need the dark metal. So I'm going to just hover my mouse over these objects and press L and I'm just going to continue to hover my mouse over all of these pieces and press L and pressing L is going to select all the linked vertices. So I'm just going to continue to do that. So press L. Let's go over here and press L and L and L and then also here and press L. So now all of those hinge pieces are selected. So I can now click on the dark metal and then we're going to click on the assign button and then I can tab back into object mode. And now you can see that all those hinges have the dark metal. All right, so now let's select the hot dog holders. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and just select all these hot dog holders. So I'm going to select all of them. So now that we have all of them selected at the same time, I can click on the drop down and I want to add the metal light because I want all of them to have the metal light. So now that we've added the metal light onto this last one here, I can press Control L and again we can link the materials. So all the objects are going to have the same material that the last object has. So because this was the last object that selected, it's going to link all the materials and now all of those have the light metal. All right, so it's now time to do the hot dog material. So let's click on one of these hot dogs. We can click on new here to add a new material and I can just rename this to hot dog. And then I'm going to select this object, click on the drop down, add the the hot dog and I'm going to select this one, click on the drop down and add the hot dog and also click on this one, click on the drop down and select the hot dog. All right, so now they all have the hot dog material. Now I will be using some procedural nodes to create the hot dog. So I'm going to click right over here on the shading tab um, and let's make this a bit smaller. And we're just going to look at one of these hot dogs, just see how that's looking. So just make sure the hot dog is selected and make sure that the hot dog material is right here. So let's create that hot dog material. So I'm going to start by pressing shift A and I'm going to search for a noise text Let's click on the noise texture and drop it here. And then again, because we have the Node Wrangler add-on turned on, I can press Control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And then let's click on the mapping here and I'll press X to delete that. So I can now take the object and I'm going to put the object into the vector. So it's using the object coordinates. And then again, you can hold down the Control and Shift key and click on the noise texture to preview it. So just hold down the Control and Shift key and then select the noise texture. And then I'm going to change the scale to three so that that's a bit smaller. And then I will also turn the detail all the way up to the max, which is 15. So let's take the factor and we're going to put that into the base color. And then I also want to give this a little bit of bump. So I'm going to take the factor and we're also going to put that into the normal. And then I can control shift and select the principled BSDF. Now I need to convert this to normal data because this is just black and white data, but this needs to be the normal data. So to convert it, I'm going to press shift A and then let's search for a bump node. Click on the bump node and we're just going to drop this in here. So the factor is going to go into the height of the bump and then the normal can go through the normal. And now it's going to make the hot dogs look like they're all bumpy. Now that is way too strong um, and I do want that to be a very subtle bump because hot dogs are pretty smooth. So on the strength value right here, I'm going to turn the strength value to a 0 0.06 and that way the bump is still there. If you kind of look at it on side view kind of to see the reflections, it's definitely still there, um, but 
it's not as strong. All right, now I also wanna change the colors because that doesn't look like a hot dog material. So I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna to go to the search and I'm gonna search for a color ramp node. And let's just drop the color ramp right in here between the factor and the base color. So we can now change the colors in between here and that's gonna change the colors for the hot dog. So on the light tab right here, I'm gonna start by making this a very dark red, kind of a reddish brownish, kind of like a meat color. And if you'd like to use the same exact hex value that I'm using, for this darker color you can click over on the hex value and you can type in a hex value of 421d 0e so that is the color that I'll be using and then this color right here this is going to be a similar color so it's going to be a bit brighter and kind of a brownish reddish color kind of like a meat color um, and for this one if you want to use the same exact hex value that I'm using over on the hex you can type in 9b 472a. So those are some really nice colors that I found look good on the hot dog. Now I do want a little bit of light to be going through the hot dog, so I'm going to turn the subsurface value up. So I'm going to turn the subsurface up to a 0.15, so that way there's just a little bit of subsurface and so a bit of light is going to be going through the hot dog. And then I also need to change the subsurface color because right now it's white, so instead of it being white I'm going to make it a similar color to this. So I can just click on this dark color, this dark color, and I can click and drag and drop this color onto this one here and that is going to get it pretty close but then I do want to make this a little bit lighter and a little bit more saturated and if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using for the subsurface color right here on the subsurface color the hex value is a value of 6f 2200. So that is the color that I'll be using. And then I do want this hot dog to be a little bit more shiny. So on the roughness value, I'm going to turn this to a 0.3. So it's a little bit more shiny. Now I do think the noise texture is scaled a little bit too small. So I'm going to ch change the scale down to like a two. So it's a bit bigger and that definitely looks better. All right. And that is it for the hot dog material. And because I already added this hot dog material to the other hot dogs, you can see they now all have that hot dog material. And that is looking really tasty. All right, so we're now going to do the mustard material. So let's just click back over here on the layout and I'm just going to select this mustard object right here. Let's click on new here to add a new material and I can just call this mustard. And then I also want to move over on the timeline and go over here to the end so I can see this. I want to select this one right here. I'm going to click on the drop down and I'm going to add the mustard material. And then let's just make this mustard material. So I'm just going to make this a bit bigger. So on the base color, I'm just going to make this a bright yellow slightly towards the orange, but pretty easy yellow. And then I do want the mustard to be pretty shiny. So on the roughness here, I'm just going to change this to like a 0.2. So it's more shiny. And that is it for the mustard material. So it's a pretty simple material. If you want to, you could add like a very subtle noise texture to maybe make it a little bit lumpy, but I think that looks pretty nice. All right. So now we are going to be creating the plate material. So this is going to be a very simple material. So I'm just going to select this plate here. Let's click on new and I can just call this plate. And then we need to add this plate material to all of the other plate objects. So I'm just going to hold down the shift key. We're going to shift select all of the plates. And then lastly, I'm going to shift select this last plate right here. And this one has the material on it. So I can now press control L and we want to link the data. So I'm going to link the materials. So they all have that plate material. Now this is a pretty easy material to make. I'm just going to turn the base color all the way up to white. And then I do want it to be pretty shiny. So I'm going to turn the roughness here to like a 0.1 so that that is a shiny plate material. Let's press control S again to save and now let's do the mustard bottle. So I'm going to select the mustard, let's click on new and we can just call this mustard bottle. And then on the base color here I'm going to make that a yellow color and I'm going to make it a little bit more towards the orange. All right so that's the color that I'll be using. Now I also want to give this a little bit of subsurf because this is like a plastic bottle so I'm going to turn the subsurface up a little bit. I'm just going to turn it up to like a 0.1. And then the subsurface color on default is white but I'm going to make this a little bit of an orangey color. So I'm going to make it kind of an orangey color so that subsurf is orange. And then this is also plastic so I want to make it more shiny. So on this roughness value here I'm just going to change the roughness to like a 0.25 so that it is more shiny. And then if you want to make it even more reflective you can also turn the specular up. So I'm going to turn this specular value all the way to one so that it is even more reflective. And that is it for the mustard bottle. So I now want to select this mustard bottle and I want to duplicate it and I want to put some other bottles 
bottles back here um, on that back shelf. So I'm going to select the mustard bottle. I'll press shift D to duplicate it and move it here. And then you can see that it's still parented. So what I need to do is I need to press alt P and I want to clear the parent and keep the transform. And that way now it can move by itself. So I'm just going to press G to grab. We're just going to move it down here. And then I also want to make this a little bit longer. So I'm going to tab to go into edit mode and I'm just going to hold down the alt key and just select that ring of vertices. So I can now press G to grab. We're going to bring it down the Z axis and I'm just going to make this bottle of mustard a little bit longer. So something like that. All right. So back in object mode, I'll press G to grab and I'm just going to move this down and I'm just going to stick it right on this back shelf here. So just like that. And this way it's just going to add some more things into the background and make it look like there's more stuff in the scene and more stuff in the factory. Now in the camera view, I want to bring this mustard bottle over. So it's all the way over at the very end. So just about right there. And then what I want to do is I want to duplicate this mustard bottle and I want to make mayonnaise and ketchup. And also I'm going to have a green bottle for some relish. So I'm going to select the mustard bottle and let's press seven on the numpad to go to the top view and I can press G to grab and we're going to bring this over more towards the front. So I'm now going to press shift D to duplicate. We're going to duplicate this. I'm going to bring it over on the X axis and then I can also press G and Y and we're going to bring this over like that. And then this one, this one is going to be a ketchup bottle. So right here on the mustard bottle, we need to duplicate this material so that we can make it red. So to duplicate it, I'm going to click on this button right here and that is going to duplicate duplicate the material but keep the same data. So I can now just call this ketchup bottle instead of mustard bottle. All right, ketchup bottle. So now the only thing that I need to change is the base color. So instead of it being yellow, I'm going to make it red and then I want to add two more. So I want to add one with mayonnaise and then one with the relish. So I'm going to select this and then we're going to shift select this one and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate. Let's click and hold with our middle mouse wheel and let go to constrain it to the axis. And I'm going to bring that over. I can also press zero on the numpad to go into the camera's view. And we're just going to move that over. So I'm going to move it over to about there. And then let's also press G to grab and just kind of move that over. And we're just going to stick it kind of over there so it's right up against the wall there. All right, so let's click on this object right here. And I want to duplicate this one and make it a separate material. So I'm going to click on this button right here. That's going to make a separate material. And then this one, I don't want it to be mustard. I'm going to name this to mayo bottle or mayonnaise. And then for the base color right here, I'm just going to make it a white color. Um, but, but the subsurface is still going to be a little bit orange. So let's just go into rendered mode and see how that's looking. So that's looking pretty good. I think for the base color, I might make it just slightly more towards the yellow, but I do want it to be pretty white. All right, let's click on this one right here. And this one, we're going to click on this button here to duplicate the material. And I can just call this one instead of ketchup bottle. I'm going to rename this one to a relish bottle. For this one on the base color, I can just make this a bright green. And then I'm going to make it a little bit darker. Now for this one, I don't want the subsurface to be orange because that just looks really weird. So I'm going to click on the subsurface color and I'm going to make that a bright green, but then I'm going to make it a bit darker. All right, that's looking pretty good. Maybe just a little bit darker. And then on this base color, I could even make that a little bit darker as well. All right, and that is looking pretty good. So another thing that I want to do is I want to duplicate one of these finished hot dogs and I want to stick those on the shelf as well. So I'm going to select this hot dog here and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'll shift and select all of these other pieces. So we're going to select the plate, the two buns, the hot dog and the mustard. So I'm now going to press shift D to duplicate and let's bring this over on the Y axis and I'll just bring it over here. And then there's two important things that we need to do. We need to delete the keyframes so that it doesn't move. So just just double tap the A key to make sure all of those keyframes are selected in the timeline and I'll press X to delete and we can delete the keyframes. And then the other thing that we need to do is we need to press Alt P and we want to clear the parent and keep the transform. And that way these objects are not going to be parented to the other objects. Now I'm also going to hold down the shift key and lastly just select this object right here, the plate, and then I'm going to press control P and I'm going to click on object keep transform. That way I can just move the plate and the rest of the hot dog is going to move around with it. So let's go to top view and I can press G to grab. We're going to bring that over and I can press G and Z and we are going to bring that down. And you can see that the shelf isn't really big enough. So I can just select the shelf and let's press G to grab. We can bring it out on the Y axis and just make that a bit longer. Um, and then we can bring this out a little bit and stick it right over here. So I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to rotate it on the Z axis a little bit. And I'm also going to bring this back a little bit more just so there's a bit more of that shelf. So there's a bit more space. And you could also, if you want to just scale it down a little bit, because it is pretty far in the background. So you're not really going to notice if the scale isn't quite correct. 
um, if the scale isn't super consistent it is far away so you're not really going to notice that so i'm just going to bring this over and just kind of stick it right there you could also bring this up more to the front now that we have a little bit more shelf space all right so now i want to create some little white bowls and i'm just going to put these in the background just to add some stuff to the hot dog factory so i'm going to press shift a and i'm going to go right down here and i'm going to add a cylinder and then if you click right over here on the add cylinder settings right above me i just want to make sure the vertices is set to 12 and then i can just close that so i'll press g to grab let's bring this over i'll press s to scale we're going to scale that down and g to grab and i'm going to stick this right there and i'll just bring that over and then i can press the period on the numpad to zoom over to it and then I'll tab into edit mode and I'm going to click right here to go to the face select and I'm just going to select this face. I can press G to grab. Let's bring this down on the Z axis and then I can double tap the A key to select everything and I can press G to grab and we can just bring that up. And then I'm going to select this face right down here. I can press S to scale and we're going to scale that down and then I can bring that down as well on the Z axis. So we're just making a simple bowl right there. And then I want to select this top face and I want to press X to delete and I'm Going to delete the faces so now what i can do is i can add a solidify modifier just to make it thicker so let's click right over here on the modifier properties and i can click on add modifier and we're going to go right down here and under generate at the very bottom here we're going to add a solidify let's turn the thickness value up um, and you can also hold down the shift key and make the thickness a bit bigger. And we're just gonna make that a little bit thicker like that. And then I also wanna add a bevel to bevel some of those edges. So let's click on add modifier. We're gonna go right down here and add a bevel. And then right here on the segments, we're gonna turn the segments up a bit. So maybe just turn it up to like three or four. And then right here, let's make the amount smaller so I can hold down the shift key as I drag the amount to make my movements more sensitive. And now we're just adding a bevel right there. And then also turn the angle limit up just to like a 34, just to make sure it doesn't add a bevel right here. It just adds a bevel on these sides. So now I want to smooth it out. So I'm going to press control two to add a subdivision surface. You can also just click on add modifier and add a subdivision surface just like that. Okay. So that was much more smooth. And then using the object context menu, I'm just going to shade this smooth. I'll press G and Z and we're going to bring this bowl down and I'm just going to stick it right down here on the ground. And then let's click on the bowl and I'm going to click right over here on the material properties and on the drop down here, I'm going to go right down here and we've made a lot of materials and I want to add the plate material just so that it has a nice shiny white material. Let's go into the camera view and see how that's looking. I do want to scale the bowl up a little bit so it's a little bit bigger. And then I want to make a stack of bowls. So I'm going to press period on the numpad to zoom back over to this bowl. And I'm going to press shift D to duplicate. And then I'll bring it up on the Z axis and just bring that up a little bit. Then I can press shift D to duplicate again. And I'm going to rotate this bowl over. Just kind of rotate it so it has a random rotation. So it looks like somebody just stacked these bowls on top of each other. And then I'll press shift D to duplicate this again. And I'll press R to rotate. And I'm just going to rotate this over and stick it into place kind of right there. All right, there we go. So we have a nice little stack stack of bowls and then I'm going to click on this bowl here and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and bring this bowl over a little bit. Now in this bowl I thought it would be cool to add some sort of sauce maybe some ketchup or maybe some barbecue sauce or something so I'm going to be creating like some barbecue sauce and putting that in the bowl. So to make the barbecue sauce I'm going to tab into edit mode on this object and then I'm going to hold down the alt key and I'm just going to select that ring of vertices. I'm now going to press shift D to duplicate and let's just bring this up on the Z axis click to place that and then I can press P and that is going to bring up the separate options and we want to separate this by the selection so everything that's selected is going to be now its own object so I can now tab back into object mode and then I'm just going to select this object right here now I'm going to go over to the modifier properties and I don't want to solidify so I'm going to click on the X to delete it and then I can also click on the X here to delete the bevel we do want the subsurface though so I'm now going to scale this down a little bit and I'll press G to grab we're going to bring this down on the Z axis and I'm just going to stick it right inside the bowl so I'm going to tab into edit mode now now, and I'm going to press A to select everything. So I can now press E to extrude and then we'll press S to scale. We can scale that down and then I can press G to grab and we're going to bring this up on the Z axis and then I can pr press E to extrude and S to scale and then E to extrude and then S to scale and then E to extrude again and S to scale and E to extrude and S to to scale and then I can press F and that is going to fill a face there in the center and then also I want to make this maybe a little bit more round so I'm gonna click right here and that is going to turn on the proportional editing and then I can press G to grab and let's press Z and we're gonna bring this up on the Z axis and what you can do is you can scroll with your mouse wheel and that is going to change the size of the proportional editing and so that's gonna drag out more of the vertices and it's gonna pull along more of the vertices so I'll just click to place that and then I can click on this button to turn off the proportional editing I'm gonna tap back into object 
object mode, and then I'm going to scale this down a little bit so it's a bit smaller. And then using the object context menu in object mode, I can shade that smooth. So now I just want to make it a bit bumpy. So I'm going to click on add modifier, and I'm going to go right down here and add the displace modifier. And then I can click on new to add a new texture on the displacement. And then I'm going to click right here over here on this button, and that's going to take me to the texturing panel. And on the type here from image or movie, I want to change this to clouds. So now it's going to displace that with the cloud texture. So I can change the size. I'll make the size a bit smaller. And then I'm going to go right here to the modifier properties. And on the strength here, I'm just going to turn the strength down so it's not quite that big. And then also it is kind of low quality. So I'm going to turn the levels of viewport and render both up to three. So it's a little bit higher quality. And then also on the strength here, let's maybe just turn this to a 0.16 and that way it's not quite as strong and then if you click right back over here on the texturing panel you could turn the size up a little bit so there's not quite that many bumps all right there we go so that's going to be the barbecue sauce so let's just select this now and we're going to do the materials so i'm going to click right over here on the material properties and then i don't want it to be the plate material so i'm going to click on the drop down and i'm going to change it to the ketchup bottle material and then what i want to do is duplicate this and just make it a little bit of a darker color so i'm going to click on this button here to duplicate it and I'm going to just rename this to BBQ sauce, barbecue sauce. All right. And then on the base color here, I can just turn this down so it's a bit darker of a red color. Let's go into the camera view and I can press the Z button, move my mouse up to go into the rendered view and just see how it's looking. And that is going to be far away in the background and it'll also be a little bit blurred. So you're not going to see it in too much detail, but I do want to add some things back here just to give a little bit more to the environment. All right. So now we're going to be creating a few glass bottles and we'll just put these around. So I'm going to press shift a and again let's go right down here and add a cylinder i'm going to press g to grab we're going to bring this over and i'm going to press s to scale we're going to scale this down and g to grab and we're just going to stick that in there so now what i want to do is go right over here on the modifier properties and i want to click on add modifier and i'm going to add a bevel modifier just to bevel out those edges so i'm going to turn the segments up a little bit maybe just to like a four and then i can also turn the amount down a little bit so it's a little bit smaller right there and then using the object context menu i can shade this smooth and then on the angle, let's just turn the angle up to like a 33, and that way it ensures that we're not going to have any beveling right here. All right, and then I'm also going to press Control 2. That is going to add the subdivision surface with two levels. Um, you can also just click on Add Modifier and add the subdivision surface, but the shortcut key is Control 2. So I'm going to tab back into Edit Mode, and then I'm going to click right over here to go to the Face Select. I'm now going to select this face, and then I can press I, and I is going to inset that, and I'm just going to make it a bit smaller. And then I'm going to press E to extrude, and we are going to extrude this up. So now what I want to do is I want to create a lid for the top of that jar. So I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate bring it up on the z-axis and I'll press S to scale. We're going to scale that up and I can also bring it down a little bit and then I'll scale it up a little bit more and then I can press E and E is going to extrude that out and I'm going to bring it down. Now we also need to recalculate the normals. So I'm going to double tap the A key to select everything and then I'll press shift N and that will recalculate the normals. All right, let's tap back into object mode and we have that nice glass bottle or glass jar. Let's just scale this down a little bit and I'm going to stick it down here. So now I want to add a few materials. So I'm going to click right over here on the material properties and I'm going to click on it new and I can just call this material glass. All right. And then right here on the surface on the principled BSDF, I'm going to click on this and instead I want to change it to the glass BSDF. And then I am going to take the roughness value and I'm going to turn that to zero so that it is more reflective. And then I'm going to take the roughness value right here and turn that to zero so you can see more through it. So let's go into rendering modes, just see how that's looking. All right, and that is looking pretty good. So now I also want to make the jar lid be a different material. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and then just make sure everything is deselected with A. And then I'm going to hover my mouse over this object and press L and that'll select the linked vertices. And then I can just click on the plus right here to add a new material in the slot. I'm going to click on the new button and I can just call this like jar lid and then just click on assign right there to assign that. And then for the base color, I'm just going to make this kind of like a gray color and I'll make it a little bit more shiny. So I'll just turn the roughness down. All right, there we go. So now I can just stick this into place. Um, so I'm just going to move it over. Let's move it over here. And then I want to press shift D to duplicate click and hold with my mouse wheel to constrain it to the x-axis and put it over there. And then I'm also going to press shift D to duplicate and just bring one more right over there. So let's go into the camera view now and see how that's looking. Maybe I'll bring this over to about there and that is looking pretty cool. And if you want to, you can totally pause this video and you could make some more things. Um, you could add some more things to the factory if you'd like to. I'm going to call this good. So just press control S again to save and now I'm going to add a depth of field. So what I'm going to do is press shift A and I first 
want to add an object that the camera can focus on. So I'm going to go down here to empty and I'm going to add a plane axis. And this object, this is just an empty and so you can't actually see this object, um, but we can use this object to tell it where the focus is going to be. So I'm going to move this over and I'm going to stick it right here where this hot dog is because that is where I want the focus to be. So I'm going to move it there and that way we can make the camera's depth of field focus right here and that way this will be in focus and then things that are farther away will be a little bit blurred. So I'm going to select the camera now and then we're going to go right down here to the camera settings and I'm going to click on the depth of field. Now on the focus object I'm going to click right here and I can start to type in empty and I'm just going to select the empty. That way it's going to focus on the empty so you can already start to see that that's being a bit blurred in the background. So I'm going to turn the f-stop value down to like a value of 2, but you can play around with this um, if you want things to be more focused or more blurred. I want this to be pretty focused, but then this in the background I want it to be a little bit blurred so your focus is more over here. And actually I might just turn up the focus a little bit so that like this hot dog is a little bit more focused. So maybe a 2.8 or something like that. Let's maybe try a 2.5. That looks pretty good. All right, now because this is an animation, I do want to turn on motion blur because motion blur does look pretty nice. So I'm going to go right over here to the render properties and I'm going to close the color management and right here I want to turn on motion blur and that is going to add just a little bit of blur when the objects are moving and I do think it makes it look much more realistic. And then also, if you're using the EV render engine, there are a few things you could do to make it look a bit better. So I like to turn on the ambient occlusion, the sp screen space reflections, and then also the motion blur in Blender EV. I am going to be using the cycles render engine, so I'm going to change this back to cycles. But I do want to turn the motion blur on just so that when the objects are moving, there's just a little bit of a blur. So we are now about ready to render the final animation. So right over here, if you go to the output properties, this is a pretty high quality image. And if you want it to render faster, you could totally make this small. Um, for instance, you could just change these to like 1080 by 1080, but I do want this to be pretty high quality, so I'm going to do 2560 by 2560. But of course, you could turn this down if you want it to render faster. Now, some other things we can do to make it render faster is to go over to the render properties, and let's go down here and open up the sampling. So I am going to render with 100 samples. Of course, if you're using Blender EV, the samples isn't going to really matter, um, but you could render with less samples. If you use less samples, it's going to render faster. So you can just use just as many samples samples as you're going to need. And then also, once you render this, if it's a little bit noisy, we can add the denoise node in Blender's compositor, and that will also speed up render times because we can use less samples and the denoise node will smooth it all out and make it nicer. Now another thing we can do to speed up the cycles rendering is to turn down the light paths. So you can just open up the light paths right here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the caustics. So I'm going to turn off both of these caustics right here. I'm also going to turn the filter gloss down to zero. We can also turn down the indirect light to zero. Basically, if we turn these things down, it's going to render faster. And then I'm also going to turn down the transparency. We can turn that down. And then for the transmission, if I turn this all the way down, the glass is going to look all dark, but I can just turn this down to a pretty low value. So in the camera view, I'm just going to press control B and that's going to add a boundary around the camera. And I'm just going to preview those right there. So what I can do is just start to turn this down and I'm going to make it pretty small. And it looks to me like if I turn it up to like a three, that looks okay. But if I turn it more down, it's going to look all black. And then also the total, I'm going to turn that down to like a two, the diffuse I'm going to turn to two, and the glossy I'm going to turn to two. Now if you turn these values all the way to zero, the lighting definitely looks re less realistic. Um, so don't turn it down too far, but I'm just going to turn them down so it renders a bit faster. All right, so I am now going to render this image. So I'm going to press Control S to save, and we're just going to render one image, and then in Blender's Compositor, we are going to add the denoise node to smooth it out. So just press Control S again to save, and then you can press F12 to render or click on Render, and we can render the image. And I am also using my GPU. If you have a GPU, usually GPUs are faster. So if you can use your GPU, that'll render faster. Um, if you don't have a GPU, then you'll just have to use your CPU. All right, so this is done rendering, but you can see it looks really grainy. There's all these little fireflies and it looks kind of grainy. And that is because I only rendered this with a hundred samples. But what I can do now is I can go over to Blender's compositing tab. And then in Blender's compositor, I'm gonna click on use nodes and that is going to use the compositing nodes. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. So I'll just bring down the timeline and then what I can do in here is I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for the denoise node and I'm going to drop the denoise node right in here so it's going to denoise the image and then also to make it render a bit faster I'm just going to change it to fast all right and then to preview this in the backdrop we turned on the Node Wrangler add-on earlier in the tutorial series. So if you have the Node Wrangler add-on turned on, you can control shift and select the denoise node and that is going to preview it. 
And then also make sure you have the backdrop button turned on right here. And then also to zoom the background out, I'm going to press V and to zoom the background in, I'm going to press Alt V. So I'm just going to press V, zoom the background out. And you can see that that denoise node really made the image look way nicer. And so we can use a lot less samples because the denoise node is going to smooth that all out and make it look better. And then also I am turning this to fast because I found that fast and accurate, it really doesn't change that much, at least in my experience. I haven't really found that it changes that much, but the faster one is going to be much faster. All right, now if you want to speed up your render times even more, there is one more cool little trick that we can do. And so I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So what we can do, if I just go back to the layout, I'm going to press escape to go out of this. This background here, it's not going to move at all. The background is going to stay exactly the same. And so what I can do is I can render out an image of the background and then using Blender's compositor, we can just composite the image in. And that way it's going to render much faster because it won't have to render all of these 3D objects right here. It'll just be using the image that we rendered and it'll just be sticking that in the background. So if you'd like to do this to speed up your render times a little bit more, you can do this. Now, if you're using Blender Eevee, this probably won't speed up your render times that much. Um, you could do it if you want to, but this is really going to help to speed up your render times if you're using cycles. So this image here took 35 seconds to render. So I'm just going to escape out of this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press B for the box select, and I'm going to box select all of the background pieces right here. So just all of these background pieces. I'm now going to press M and M is going to move these. So I want to click on new collection and I'm just going to call this background. All right, so we can just call this background, okay? And then click on okay. So now that we have the background right there, what I wanna do is I wanna make another collection for everything else. So what I'm gonna do is just press B for the box select. I'm gonna box select everything, although I'm going to hold down the shift key and I want to deselect the camera because we want the camera to still be there. And then I'm also going to deselect the lights. So now we just have everything else selected, but we don't have the background selected and we don't have the camera and the light. So now that we have all these objects selected, I'm gonna press the M button and I'm gonna click on new and I can just call this foreground and then click on okay. So now you can see right here, if you minimize this, we have the collection and this collection has the camera and the lights. We now have the background and that just has the background elements and then we have the foreground. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on this little check mark and that is going to hide the foreground. So now what I can do is I can just render out a still image of the background. So I'm just going to press F12 and that is going to just render the background and it finished. And so it did the denoise because we have the denoise in the compositing. So now that that is finished, you can see that we have this nice background image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on image and then let's click on save as. And I'm going to save this in a folder with my other files and I'm gonna rename this to background.png. So I'm just gonna save it as a background image as a PNG and I'll click on save as. All right, so now that that's done, I'm gonna press the escape T to get out of this. So now what I can do is I can turn on the foreground and I can turn off the background. And when I do that, now if I go into rendered mode, you can see there's all this space here. There's all this space here and also all this space over here that Blender doesn't have to render. It does have to render it, but there isn't going to be as many elements there. And so it'll render much faster. So what we now need to do is we need to make the background transparent. So this is really easy to do. It works the same in Cycles and Eevee. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right down here to the Film tab, and then I'm going to click on the Transparent. And if you're using Blender Eevee, the Transparent button is still here, but it's just like moved over a little bit. So now that that's transparent you can see the background is transparent and so it's going to render all of this space much quicker and it's also going to render all this space much quicker because there isn't anything there so just press Control s again to save and then again i'll press f12 and we're going to render just this image and it finished and you can see right here that is only 25 seconds so instead the first one took 35 seconds whereas this one only took my computer 25 seconds so that's 10 seconds faster and that's really going to add up when i'm rendering 250 frames so we just need to add the compositing nodes and the the compositing nodes might just add a second or two. So I'm going to click over on the compositing tab. And then what I'm going to do is press shift A and I'm going to search for an image because we are going to add the background image into the background. So I'm going to drop this here and then I can click on open to open it up. So then just locate to wherever you save the background image. And I'm going to click on this and then I'm going to click on open image. So now that we've added that, we just need to add this into the background. So that's really easy to do. We're just going to press shift A and I'm going to search for an alpha over node. So here is the alpha over node. We're going to click on this and drop it here. So I want to plug the viewer up to it. So I'm going to plug the image up to the viewer and up to the compositing as well. And I will move these both over. So now what I can do is I can mix these together. So we're going to take the background and we're going to put it at that into the 
this image, and then we do need to denoise every image. Um, for the render layers, we are going to need to denoise that, so we're going to take the image and put that into the bottom one. And now we'll just wait for that to load up. You can see it's compositing, and there we go. So you can see now it looks exactly the same because we're taking this image and we're sticking it in the background. But instead of it having to render every single time, it's just going to composite this image in, and the image is already rendered out, and it looks exactly the same, so it's not going to look any different. Everything else is moving, but the background is going to stay still. And also, now that we've done that, we can actually turn down the glass. So if you click over here on the light paths, let me just go back over here to the layout, and I'm going to hit the escape key to go out of this. So if I go back into the rendered view, I can open up the light paths, and I'm going to turn the transmission value all the way to zero because none of these objects are glass, so I don't need the transmission value. So now what I can do is I can render out the animation, and that will render a lot faster. Um, for me, it saves about 10 seconds, and it'll probably save a lot more time for you as well. Of course, if you're using Blender Eevee, it's probably not going to change it that much, but you could do this in Eevee if you wanted to. So now what we need to do is we need to set an output to render out all of our frames, and then in Blender's video editor, we will compile them together. So what we're going to do is click right over here on the output properties to set an output, and I am going to save these out to JPEG images, and then I'm also going to turn the quality up to 100 so they look pretty nice. But I will change them to JPEGs just so that the image size is a bit smaller. And then we need to set an output, so we're going to click on this file icon right here. And then in this folder with my other files, I'm going to click on this button here, and that's going to create a new folder. And I can just call this rendered frames. So just name that whatever you want, and then I'm going to go inside that folder and click on accept. That way it's going to render out all the images to that folder. So just press Control S again to save, and then you can press Control F12, and Control F12 is going to render the entire animation. You can also go click on render, and then click on render animation. And I'm just going to wait for this to finish, and we'll see how much render time we saved. So I'm just going to let this render, and then I will be back when it's done. All right, and the render finished. And actually, when I wasn't using my computer and also when I turned off the screen recording software, it actually rendered faster and it was rendering each frame at just about 21 seconds of frame. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to press Control S again to save, and we are now done using this Blender file. So I'm now going to click on File and let's click on new, and we're gonna go right down here and we're gonna open up a new video editing. All right, so we are now going to throw together all of the frames and compile them into a video. So I'm gonna press Shift A in the image sequencer and we wanna go right down here and I'm gonna add an image or sequence. And then just locate to the folder where you've saved all the frames and I'm gonna press A to select all the frames and then I'm gonna click on add image strip. So if I press the space bar, that is going to play it. Now, for some reason, I think this is a bug in Blender, but currently with the video editor, for some reason it's making it go backwards. Um, so I can just click on this strip here and then I can go right over here to the settings. And under video, I'm going to open up the video right over here. If you press N to open up the side panel, I'm going to click on the reverse frames and that way it is going to now play it in reverse. And so that is looking correct now. And then I also want to set the correct frame rate. So let's click on strip. And we're going to go right down here and we're going to click on set render size. And when you do this, make sure that that strip is selected and it's going to set it to the correct render size. And then also make sure the frame rate is the correct frame rate. I rendered this at 24 frames per second. All right, so we are now ready to add the sound effects to finish this off before we render it. So as I talked about in part one, we are going to be using free sound effects from a website called freesound.org, and I'll have the links in the video description to all of the sound effects. So on my other monitor, I have a file browser with all the sound effects that I've downloaded. So I'm first going to drag in the first one right here. I'm going to drag this one in, the riding a bike sound effect. And I'm going to be using this sound effect for the conveyor belt. And then to be able to see the waveforms, you can click on this button right here that says display waveform, and now you're going to be able to see that. So I'm going to press G to grab, and that is going to move this sound strip around. So I'm going to move this sound strip over here until we can see this part right here. Um, so this is like when the bicycle is moving. And I will be using this sound effect for the conveyor belt. So what I'm going to do is move to about here, and then I'm going to press the K button, and that is going to cut the strip, and then I can select this half, and I'll press X to delete. It. So now what I want to do is I want to move over to right where the conveyor belt starts to move, so about here. I'm now going to click on this strip and I'll press G to grab and I'm going to put it over here. And then I'm going to play it and I'm going to watch the conveyor belt right here. And then when the conveyor belt stops, the conveyor belt stops about here. I'm going to press the K button again to cut that and then I can just delete this strip. 
And then I want to duplicate this. So I'm going to select this strip and I'll press Shift D to duplicate it. And we're just going to drag it over here. So I'm now going to play the timeline by pressing the space bar. And I'm going to move over until this conveyor belt starts to move. So about here. And I'm going to press G to grab. Let's bring this over and place it right about there. Then I can play this and we're going to wait till it reaches the end. So it looks like it ends about here. And then I can press K again to cut that strip. And I'll select this side and I'll press X to delete it. So I now want to have this fade in and fade out. So what I'm going to do is move a few frames over and I'm just going to select this strip and we want to animate the volume. So I'm going to hover my mouse over this and press I and that is going to insert a keyframe. I'm now going to move over to the starting frame and on the volume here I'm going to change this to zero and then hover your mouse over this and press I and that is going to add a keyframe. So now if I play this you can see that it's kind of fading in right as the conveyor belt starts to move. And you couldn't hear the sound effects earlier because I had the computer audio turned off in OBS, my screen recording software, but I just turned it on. So you should be able to hear the sound effect now. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over here to about the end, pretty close to the end, and I'm going to hover my mouse over the volume and press I, and that's going to insert another keyframe. Then we're going to move over here to the very end, and I'm going to change the volume to zero, and then hover your mouse over this and press I again. So now it's going to turn on and then it'll fade out when it ends. All right, so I want to do the same thing over here. So I'm just going to move over to about here, hover your mouse over this and press I. That's going to insert a keyframe. Let's go over here to the first frame. We can change this to zero and then you can press I again to insert a keyframe. And you can see it's going to show you there um, that little preview of the sound. So I can now move over here. Let's hover our mouse over this and press I. That's going to insert a keyframe. We can go to the very end and then we can turn the volume to zero and then just press I with your mouse hovered over that value. So now we have the sound effects of the conveyor belts. So I'm now going to drag in the next sound effect. This is going to be the oobleck goo and we're going to put this sound effect right here. So we're going to go over right here, right when the muster is being added. So I'm going to bring this over, press G to grab. We're going to bring it over. And also I'm going to click on the display waveforms so that we can see that. And then on the volume, I'm going to turn this down so it's not quite that loud, maybe just to like a 0.6, maybe a 0.7. That sounds better. And then also I'm going to turn the pitch down to a 0.9. So that way it's going to be a little bit slower and a little bit darker of a sound or deeper of a sound. All right, so you can just play through that and you can see that I was looking pretty good. So now I'm going to drag in the next sound effect. This is going to be the very slimy sound effect, the so slimy sound effect. And let's click on the display waveform drawings and I'm going to turn the volume down to maybe like a 0.5. Let's just bring this over and then play through that. And that's pretty good. I'm going to bring this over to the starting and then I'm also going to turn the pitch down just so that it's a little bit of a deeper sound. All right, and that is good. So we now have those two sound effects for the mustard and that's pretty cool. All right, so I'm now going to click and drag and drop in the robotic arm drill machine sound effect and I'm going to bring this over and then I'm going to click on display waveforms. So this sound effect is going to be used whenever the robot arm is moving. So I'm going to turn the volume down because I don't want it to be quite that loud. Maybe turn it down a bit more to like a 0.2. So if you take a look at this sound effect, it starts to turn on right here, and then it's pretty much exactly the same all the way to here, to when it ends. So I'm going to press K, and then I'm going to move over here, make sure this is selected, and press K again. That is going to cut the strip, and I can select this part here in the middle and press X to delete it. I can now move over here to when it's there's no sound, and I can press K again. So we now have the starting and the endings. So this is when the, the robot arm starts to move, and this is when it stops. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move over here to when the robot arm is starting to move and I'm going to select this sound effect. I'll press G to grab and just bring it over here. So now it's going to start to turn on. Let's grab this sound effect. I'll press G to grab to move it. And we're just going to move to where the robot arm stops. And you can just play through that and make sure that is looking good. So I'm now going to select this handle right here. Just click on the corner to select the handle and I can press G to grab and we're going to connect that up. And now it is seamless. So I now want to select this and then shift select this. So we have both of them selected and I'm going to press shift D and shift D will duplicate them. And then I want to move over here and I want to move it right about here so that it starts when the robot arm is moving up. And we're going to have that move up and then you can see it kind of ends right about here. So I need to click right here to select the handle and I'll press G to grab. We're going to move that over and then let's also select this and I'll press G to grab and we're going to move that over. And then let's also make that a little bit smaller and bring it in. And that looks pretty good. 
I'm also going to press B for the box select and I'm going to drag a box around these sound effects and I'll press G to grab and I'm going to bring them down. I'm going to click and hold with my mouse wheel and bring it down on the Y axis like that. So I'm now going to select this strip right here and I'll press Shift D to duplicate and then I'm going to click right here and I'll press G to grab and I'm going to bring that out. So I can now just play through it. And this part right here, this is a little bit of a deeper sound effect. So I'm going to select this handle right here, press G to grab and move it in. So I can now play it. And you can see that it starts to turn on right there. So I'm going to press K and then I'm going to move over here and I'm going to move to the very end. So let's drag this out. And then I'm going to press K again right here to cut this and I can select this and I'll press X to delete it. So I'm going to select this and I'll press G to grab and let's bring that over and then let's listen to it. So you can see it stops right here, so I'm going to press K again to cut that, and then I'll press X to delete it. So now I want to sync this up with this robotic arm. So I'm going to move to about here when this robotic arm starts. I'm going to select this and I'll press G to grab. Let's bring it over and bring it down. And then I can just play through that. That sounds good. And then I can select this one. I'll bring this over and I want to bring this to the very end when the robot arm stops. So the robot arm stops about there. So I'm going to bring this over and then play through that. And then I'm going to bring this handle over, so select the handle and bring it over to connect that. So I'm going to do the same thing, so I'm going to select this and then press Shift D to duplicate. We're going to bring it up here, and then I can select the handle and I'll press G to grab and bring it out. So right here it kind of ends, and then right here it starts. So I'm going to press K to cut that, and then I'm going to bring this over here. I'll press K again to cut that. Let's bring this over here and then I can press the K button again and then bring this over here and press the K button again. So I just want the starting and the ending. So I can select this, I'll press X to delete it. I can select this one, I'll press X to delete that and this one here, press X to delete that. So I can now move this to the starting when the robot arm starts to move again. And you can see it looks like it starts to add the mustard right there. And then it ends right there, so I'll bring this over there and we can just listen to that. And that is good, so I can now select this handle, I'll press G to grab, select this handle, press G to grab and move those together. So now let's listen to the entire thing. All right, that is good. So I can also just select this piece right here. I don't really need this. So I can press X to delete. I'm just going to take this one and duplicate it over. So I'm now going to select this here and hold down the shift key, select this one here, and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate. Let's bring this up and let's also save this project. I forgot to save this blender file. So let's click on file and click on save as. And I'm going to rename this to video editing.blend and then I'll click on save as. And then you can just press control S to save this. So now I want this piece to be right here when the robot arm is moving back up. So I'm going to move to the starting, move this over. Move that over a little bit. And it is important to get the timing right so it looks more believable. And that is pretty good. And then we still have two more sound effects we haven't used yet. So I'm going to click and drag and drop this one in here. The robot moves his arms and I'm going to press G to grab and move this right over here. And then you can also click on the display waveforms and let's play through this. So it makes that cool little sound kind of like that hydraulic sound. And I do think it sounds pretty cool. And then we also need to select this one and shift select this one. And we need to make the sound effect for this other robot arm moving back. So I'll press shift D to duplicate this. Let's move over to the beginning right about there. And then just fix the timing. So just play through that and listen to it. And then you can move the handles to connect it. And I need to move that over just a little bit more. And that is pretty good. All right, so there's just one more sound effect that I want to add. I'm going to add this last one here, the motor humming. So this one, this one's just going to be a sound effect in the very background, and it's going to be really quiet. And it's just going to add some ambience, uh, kind of to make it sound like a factory. So I'm going to turn the volume way down. So I'm just going to click on the volume here, make it really small. And then I'm just going to put this sound effect right here in the very center. And I'll just maybe turn the volume to 8.5. 
So you can now just listen to this and make sure that's looking all good. Now there is one thing that I want to do right at the very end here. You can see that there's a few frames where nothing kind of moves, kind of the last four frames or so, and then it starts to move at the starting. So I found that it looks a little bit better if we actually cut out the last few frames. So what I'm going to do is click right here on this handle on this frame strip, and I'm going to press a G to grab and move it back a little bit. So I'm going to make sure it's perfectly still. So probably to about there, maybe move it back just one frame. So I'm just going to cut out the last five frames. Frames. So that's good. And then what I want to do is make sure I'm at the last frame right here and I'm going to click on this and I will press K to cut that and then I can delete this extra part. Let's go right over here. So I'm going to move over to the starting and then let's go right here to the first one. I'm going to select this and I will press K to cut that. Also select this one and press K to cut that and then I can press X to delete and select this and press X to delete. All right, so this is gonna be it. So we now just want to loop this entire thing over lots of times. So what I'm gonna do is press A to select everything, and then I'm going to press Control G. So Control G is going to turn these into a meta strip. So now what I can do is press G to grab, click with my mouse wheel, bring it down on the X axis, and I'm just gonna bring it down to the very starting one, the very first one here. And also I am holding down the Control key and clicking with my middle mouse, and that is going to make this bigger or smaller. So it's going to change the size of the preview. And then you can click with your middle mouse wheel to pull that around. I probably should have mentioned that earlier. All right. So now what we can do is we can turn this end frame up. So I'm going to bring this end frame way up. And then we now have this meta strip and it has all the sound effects. So I can now just press shift D to duplicate and we're going to drop this right here. And now it should loop. So let's just play through this and watch it. And there we go. So you can see it loops. So it just ends and then starts at the next one. So that is really cool. So now what you can do is you can just press Shift D to duplicate, drop it right here, Shift D to duplicate and drop it right here. And you can do it as many times as you want. It's just going to continue to loop. So I'm just going to do that four times. Um, you could do it more if you want to. I'm just going to do it four times. And then let's just set the end frame. So I want the end frame to be right here. So you can see this says 981. So on the end frame right here, I can just type in 981. And then also I actually need to move it one back. So I'm going to bring it one back so it's at 980. All right, and there we go. So we now have that looping four times. Let's press Control S again to save, and then let's just render this out to a final video. So on the output here, I'm just going to click on this button to set an output. And I'm just gonna rename this to Final Render, and I'm just gonna save it with all my other files and click on Accept. All right, and then on the file format, I like to use FFmpeg Video. And then on the encoding, I'm gonna open this up, and I like to use a container of MPEG4. And then for the video codec, I like to use H.26 and then I set this to medium quality and good and let's also go down here and then for the audio I like to use the audio codec of AAC so if you want to use those settings those are the settings that I'm going to use so I'm going to press Control S again to save and then I'm going to press Control F12 to render out the final video and there we have it so there is the final video so that's going to wrap it up for this blender tutorial series on how to create this hot dog factory looping animation so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series and thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like to help support me and my YouTube channel, then you can purchase the finished project files for this tutorial on my Gumroad store, and you can also get it if you join my Patreon. And checking out my Gumroad store and Patreon page is a really great way to help support me and this YouTube channel. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series, and thank you for watching.